if you if you have a job, your company will replace you. You might we have a test. We are in exam. This exam is lasting a few days, few hours, few seconds basically. And then we are going for having a life forever. So why you give it so much importance? Give importance to the goal, to the purpose, to the end. Don't give importance to the, the day of the exam. After the exam, you must have a rank, position, you must have a degree, and you're so happy with your degree, and then you have a job, and then you become senior position in your job. Sayyidina Habib Ramar, how many PhDs he has? I don't believe he has one. Hey, how many of your friends have any PhDs? 50, 20, 100 for each one of us, right? Hey, where they are with their PhD? It's just a document. What is it inside? So what is inside the heart from this door? You see? So, most influential personality in the world, say Man Habib Rahman. PhD? No. Nope. Master degree? No. Nope. A simple, uh, we call it license, when you call it a bachelor, a bachelor, yeah? No. I don't believe, no, nothing, nothing like that. Why? al jaw heart. The heart is clean. The heart is, is so clean that everyone can see it. Okay, you have many Cambridge and Oxford and Harvard and and sick, insane, crazy universities that's priceless and that's so expensive with so many. Then where does where this guy go? Do you respect them? Do you know them? Do you follow them? See, so when you ask Allah Azza wa Jal to give you Akhirah, He will give you dunya and Akhirah. Because dunya, it's much lower than Akhirah. Allah Azza wa Jal gives Akhirah only to the one He loves, and He can give dunya to anyone. So when Allah Azza wa Jal giving you Akhirah, by asking Akhirah, Dunya is automatically inside. But when you get dunya, akhirah is not automatically inside. That's why, don't give it so much importance. Um, when you hear gossip, I believe that this last day you heard a lot of gossip. Okay. People are giving you presents. Take the present and be happy. In the Imam al-Hasan al-Basri, uh, one of the, his neighbors used to say, this guy, Hassan al-Basri, the head of Tabi'in, this generation after Sahaba, student of, of Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib, Hassan al-Basri, everybody knows who said Hassan al-Basri. And somebody was shouting at him in front of people, Ya Munafiq, Ya Munafiq, Hassan al-Basri. <laughs> Hassan al-Basri say, this man knows me better than anyone. Because even Hassan al-Basri has a high rank, high status, he's still having for us, but for himself, for himself, he was not much. For himself, he was a sinner. For himself, he was probably munafiq. Sayyidina Umar was scared to be munafiq. And we are today so much mu'min that we can take one hour criticizing another mu'min, being sure that we are in paradise and he is in hell. MashaAllah. <laughs> Have you heard Rasulullah in one khutbah in his life telling people, Ya ma'ashar al kuffar? Heard Rasulullah saying, this man with this man and this nasab did do and this, this and that. Babalu aqwam, general words. Why some people are doing this? Never nanima, never ghaiba. So, it's difficult to call yourself Muslim. It's more difficult to call yourself Ustad. It's insane to call yourself a sheikh and then tell him, taking one hour, two hours, one week, two weeks, one year. Two years talking about someone else. <laughs> That's dangerous. It's supposed to be an example from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam behavior, you know, inspire a behavior from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Of course, if you see a giant crazy bid'ah, like somebody calling for six prayers in, or, uh, instead of say of five, or praying dhuhr five rak'at instead of four, or having a Sikh madhab that is asking for khawarij or asking for people to praise him or uh, claiming that he is a Mahdi, claiming he is Qutb al-Zaman, claiming he is something important. If you see all these claims, I understand. We should prevent people from these people. Yes, we understand. But Sayyidina Habib Omar gave us a rule in Da'wah, beautiful rule. He said to us, when you see somebody in Da'wah that is shining, somebody that become famous, somebody that people love, somebody that people follow, if you feel something inside your heart, something, some heart, you know, if you feel something, like the beginning of something moving, jealousy, or has 
extent or why he's doing that, why he is so high, why his name is so famous, why people are following him. If you start like that, tell yourself that you are not in that one. <laughs> that one is not competition. If it's a competition, better be a singer and out of the story, better be a singer. And you don't claim and we don't have any problem with you. You okay. decide that, mashallah. We don't say that all songs are haram. Of course, we from the Moroccan Andalusian school, uh, we don't have much problem with music anyway. And we have problems with some part of some instrument of music, yes. But in general, we don't have any problem with music. So, the question here is not the fatwa. I'm not here to give fatwa. I'm a student, I'm not mufti. So I don't give any fatwa. But I'm trying to make the example closer, right? We are, as the, as the people of that one, you're not actor. You're not in competition with anyone. So if you see somebody, say that Habib Ramar said, and say Ramar is the faqir of the da'wah. Because if you read his book, uh, Tanbih, uh, you can see that he's understanding how to place the da'wah, the right moment with the right people. The kampung is the kampung, the big city is the big city, the western world is the western world. The, the Arab Bedouin is not the Arab city center. And he's explaining how to reach the heart of people in the ta'wa because if they love Rasulullah, they follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So the faqih of the da'wah of our era is probably Sayyidina Habib Rama because he understands you the really how da'wah works. And that's why he himself and his students are probably one of the most successful group of da'wah of our era. I mean, these 20 or 30 years from now. And he said that because if you feel jealous about da'wah or you have hasad about somebody, Without any reason, just why is there? Means you're not doing it for Allah Azza wa Jal. So why is your ikhlas, dear brother? Why is your ikhlas? Ikhlas to Allah Azza wa Jal. When you do something, you expect only Allah Azza wa Jal to be proud of you. Don't expect people to be proud of you. Of course, you expect your mother and father to be proud of you. In some, of course, you, you, you like your sheikh, your, your master, to say, yeah, you did well on this point. Yes, because we mean, read Allah, read our masters, necessary. Of course, we believe that we love our, our master, and if they love us, it's kind of we believe that may Allah love us. Probably, it's not sure. No, nothing is never sure. We will check, uh, verify in Akhirah. But here in Dunya, we have personal bond of our uh, uh, parents, our fathers, our murid, our mosh. So that's why when we have ijaza, well, we are so happy. Ah, he gave me ijaza. I have ijaza. Means that my sheikh is happy with me, and he gave me ijaza. That's why, um, dear brothers, Sayyidina Habib Ramar is saying that because in our era, unfortunately, Hasad al Akram, people are doing the same things Ustad against Ustad, Sheikh against Sheikh. Um, they just scared that people uh, have been, are getting so much attention, and this attention they see it as a threat for them. Because this is not da'wah. Da'wah al mahabba. When I see somebody, from Malaysia, India, China, shining in Islam and having followers, I say, MashaAllah, that's plus for Islam. That's good for Islam. Because we are in the same team. I'm not Arab, you are not Malay. We are La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, nothing else. Are you, they, not, they will bury you in the grave with your passport? No, they cannot. Your passport will die the same day you die. Your passport don't exist anymore, it's just an old paper. Same for us. So that's why. By loving Allah, loving Rasulullah, loving Ahl Bayt, loving Ulama Al Ummah, we should follow them. Sayyidina Imam Al Hassan entering the mosque of Rasulullah. So please understand where we are. We are in Medina. Sayyidina Al Hassan is born in Medina. We are in the Masjid of Rasulullah. His grandfather built the Masjid himself with the Sahaba. He is the grandson of Rasulullah. His mother, the favorite woman of all time, Fatima binti Muhammad. His father, the cousin. And the family of Rasulullah, Ali ibn Abi Talib, ibn Abdul Muttalib, ibn Hashim. Himself, former Amir al-Mu'mineen. His father, Amir al-Mu'mineen. This man, people insulting him at the entrance of the mosque of the Prophet. Imagine. Ya Arul Muslim, you are one of the lowest of Islam. Hassan bin Ali, imagine the ridiculous situation. The son of Sayyidina al-Hassan, tell him, you should answer, should respond. Of course, the son is young, still not the same hikmah. He said, from when you knew that your father can, uh, you knew your father would reply or would respond or would um, insult people. 